Ahoy mates, Julie here, and welcome to Monday's episode of The Voters TV. First up today in nautical news, we take a look at a philanthropic example of sailors helping sailors. The Sales Ocean Sales, or SOS program, based out of Australia, was created back in September 2006 to assist the fishermen who live in the South Pacific Islands. Apparently, many of those fishermen are lost at sea every year because they could not afford decent sails, and the fuel costs for their small auxiliary motors are typically so far out of their budget range that they are unable to completely fill their tanks before leaving the docks. So, if their engines happen to cut out on them when they're far from shore, they often have no way of returning home and will drift for days without ever being found. What SOS does is they acquire donated sails from yacht clubs, sailing organizations, and private contributions and give them to these needy vessels. The SOS organization also offers educational seminars and forums that teach captains how to use their sails safely and correctly in a variety of wind, weather, and sea conditions ultimately saving lives. In just one year of existence, the SOS program has grown tremendously and has gained the respect and backing of a number of parliaments and governments worldwide. In addition to their growing support system, the efforts of the SOS program have now extended to include aiding struggling sailors in places like the Maldives, Seychelles, Madagascar, and numerous African and Central and South American countries. And as far as they are concerned, this is only the beginning. For more information on the SOS Recycling Program, sail on over to their web blog at www.sales.wordpress.com. Next up in our Just for the Hull of It segment, the uh, sailboats I'm about to tell you about have hulls that aren't necessarily geared for floating on the water, just near it. Sand yacht sailing dates back to before the 16th century, when the Dutch military began using the concept to transport soldiers. It was an idea they got from the leisure version once used by those clever Egyptians. But it wasn't until 1898 that sand, or land yachting, officially became a sport when, in Belgium and France, they began to competitively race these unique sailboats on local hard sand beaches. In the years since, this interesting and captivating, well, uh, kind of form of boating, has continued to grow strong. Today, the International Land and Sand Yachting Federation, they call it the FISLY, is the official governing organization for all aspects of the sport. The recognized classes of competitive and recreational yachts include the Standard Class and Class 5, which are designed with steel or aluminum frames and masts and fiberglass seats. Then there's the Class 2 and Class 3, which have bigger frames and are built with a lighter weight fiberglass hull, a wing-shaped mast, and a mostly wooden axle. And the Class 8, also called kite buggies or paracarts, use a traction kite instead of a traditional sail and can go as fast as 70 miles an hour. For more information, you can visit the FISLY's website at www.fisly.org where you can also learn about some of the highly anticipated events they sponsor, including the World Championships, which are to be held February 10th to the 16th, 2008, on the Atlantic coast beach of Radatili in Patagonia, Argentina. And finally today, in our Ship Shape segment, have you read any good stains lately? Say you notice a puddle under your trailer or worse off, a strange sheen in that bilge. These types of stains are signs that trouble could be brewing. And from boating writers Gordon and Janet Graney, here are some telltale tip-offs as to what might be happening. Engine oil can appear black, not at all the color you put in initially. If you find an oil leak, check your oil level, add more, clean up every drop because polluters pay huge fines, and then find the source of the leak and correct it. Toronto. Next, gasoline has an unmistakable smell and also leaves a colored stain. It may be only a small overflow because you topped off the tank and the fuel expanded as it heated, but any leak calls for an immediate scramble. 
With regard to diesel fuel, it doesn't evaporate as quickly, but it too has a distinctive odor. If the fuel tank is leaking, you may see a puddle. If, however, you have a leak in a high pressure line, it may just make an unseen mist. Again, any fuel leak calls for heads up action. Then there's the heat exchanger coolant, which is usually green, yellow, or orange, and it smells sweet. <laughs> Yummy. But careful, loss of coolant results in catastrophic engine failure. Gear oil is brownish and smells scorched if clutches are slipping. If you spot it, check your fluid levels and add more as necessary. You may only need new seals. Next, water leaks could be rain runoff or air conditioner condensate. But if they accumulate, they feed rot and mildew. And if tanks or hoses are leaking, address the problem right away. Lastly, if you're a trailer sailor, walk completely around your boat before moving it because a puddle's location may be a clue to the source of any leak. Brake fluid, either from the car or from the trailer's own hydraulic surge brakes, is usually clear when fresh and brown as it ages. And any loss of brake fluid calls for immediate action. So keep an eye and a nose out for these signs. You could save yourself a lot of headache and heartache down the line. And that's a wrap on this episode of The Boaters TV. Join us back here on Wednesday. And as always, until then, safe and happy boating to you all. Take care. This episode of The Boaters TV has been brought to you by the term bitter end, which is the last part of a rope and the end made fast to the vessel, as opposed to the working end which may be attached to an anchor, cleat, or other vessel. Oh yeah, and it's also a popular name of many a fine drinking establishments, and even yacht clubs, the world over. <laughs>